I'm back with another Eco Gameplay update, and there's been a lot happening with advanced building materials, increased storage, new facilities being built, fertilizers, freeway systems, and of course, a lot of extensive mining. You know, one of the great things about Eco is that you never actually seem to reach an end state. There's always something next to do. More you want to accomplish, projects you want to initiate, needs of other players you have to satisfy, and all of it results in this investment and creativity around building the world and shaping it the way you want it. It's really just good. And the more you play, the more you realize how deep this game can really get, beyond the surface of just being a crafter builder. So, almost immediately after building my new expanded workshop, I needed to have a lot more storage space. I've talked about how important storage is, but it just seems like a situation where you can't get enough. And I've become really attached to these large lumber stockpiles that are 12 by 12 on the ground and 11 blocks high. They just hold so much. You can of course just set these stockpiles out on the ground or do what a lot of folks do and stick them up on the roof of your building. But I like to do things a little bit differently. It's harder, but it's what I like to do. I like to house all my stockpiles inside of buildings, kind of like making a warehouse for my goods. So the next project began. Above this new workshop facility, I wanted to try to fit in at least two of these large lumber stockpiles and create a large building to hold them. There was a ton of digging and block breaking, but after a while, I was starting to put up walls and get the container building all put together. They have cranes that you can get help with doing that, building these really tall kinds of structures like this, but they don't come until just a little bit later in the game. But in the interim, there's a couple of different ways that you can still accomplish these very tall structures without any mechanized assistance. One of the things I do is actually stand on top of the blocks I'm placing and put them down one at a time. What this does is it pushes me up vertically as I put down each block underneath of me, so it allows me to go as high as the number of blocks that I'm able to carry in my hand. I wanted to go 12 blocks high on the walls, plus another block for the ceiling. And you're able to carry 15 blocks of mortared stone products, so this worked out really well. I could grab a handful of mortared stone, make a vertical line of wall all the way to where I wanted it, jump down off the wall, and repeat the process. It was a bit of work, but building giant structures is actually one of the fun things about the game. I like creating these monolithic structures. Once it was all done, I had room for two of the large lumber stockpiles. An extra block of space above the stockpile, so later I could put some electric ceiling lights in there, and one extra block of space all around the perimeter of the stockpile, in case I wanted to place something there. Last time, I talked about the pollution issue I'd created with my neighbor who was growing crops on the farmland. That turned out to be a major issue. Most of the pollution was coming from my cement kiln, and I've used a cement kiln before on prior servers, and yes, it does crank out a bit of pollution, but it's not too terrible, and it does dissipate if you're not running it hours on end. You're also able to pipe away that smog that it produces some distance away. At least, that's how it used to work. Things didn't turn out as planned this time, though. First, when I tried to run the pipe system to release the smog farther away, it didn't work. I actually think it's a bug in this 9.0 release, because it definitely would route the smog farther away as your piping would take it before. But this time, no matter what I did, the source point of the pollution stayed directly on top of my cement kiln. There was just no way around it. So, with my neighbor getting angrier and angrier, I decided to just move the whole cement kiln to a whole new facility that I had built out in the desert, far away from any crops that were being grown. I had also during this time taken up fertilizing. I'll talk more about that later. But with the fertilizing skill, I built a big old compost center using the cement that I had already created. This compost center I intentionally built with some extra room in it beyond the obligatory large lumber stockpile. 
So I was able to set up my cement kiln in this compost building and continue on with my business. It did mean I was going to have to transport my product between locations, but that wasn't a huge deal. If it saved the farms and kept the farmers around me from wanting to stab me with their pitchforks, I was 100% good with it. I tried to put a little artistic style on the cement building so it didn't just look like a big old cube of concrete, but somehow it still just looks like a big old cube of concrete. But that's another great thing about this eco game. Everything is changeable and you'll find yourself upgrading, replacing and moving things quite a bit until you get it looking or working the way you want. With this building being initially put together for fertilizing, I needed to get some of that product going because the farms up to this point had really become depleted of nutrients without anyone creating fertilizer on the server. So not only was I providing a missing service, but I actually liked the fertilizer skill in the game. It's probably not one of the more lucrative skills to take, and it would be hard making a living off just doing the fertilizer, but I do really like it for a couple of reasons. One is that it creates an outlet for a lot of other products that would otherwise become largely unusable. For people doing the butchery skill, they wind up with a lot of hides and pelts left over. These really aren't usable for much of anything else, but they are a really good ingredient for making fertilizers, so I'm able to buy those from people that are wanting to get rid of them. There's also a kind of raw, unprocessed compost that is produced as a compacted sewage from people that hook up filter systems to their machines that produce contaminated effluent. <sighs> That's a lot to say. So both the pelts and the sewage are really unused waste products that no one else needs. There's also sticks and grass that also wind up overflowing people's stockpiles and wind up having very little use for them as well. There's also the ability to create your own compost by taking a piece of fruit or vegetable and just dropping it on the ground. These kinds of things are considered compostable items, and if you leave it on the ground long enough, it actually turns into a pile of unrefined compost, just like the sewage. I can take things like the decomposed plants and sewage and turn it into a refined compost that you can put on the farms, and it's a really nice nutrient. So this whole fertilizer thing just feels very much part of the circle of things here in the eco game. And it's really hard for a long-term server to do well without having at least one fertilizer person taking in all these leftovers and turning them into something that's really needed by all the farmers. Now, as far as my focus on bricks and blocks, my big strategy was to eventually get advanced masonry and that would allow me to make one of the new materials they introduced in 9.0, which was the Ashlar Stone. The advanced masonry table needs to have a room that's close to tier 3 in building materials, which is no problem at all because I was making concrete, which is a tier 3 material. So I built a small workshop just on the other side of the road of my little tunnel area for my bricks and mortared stone. and made it all nicely nestled into the surrounding dirt and rock that was in my area. The advanced masonry table does need electricity to run, and one of the cheapest things for me to get at this point in the game was a steam engine to generate electricity. These things burn a ton of coal, but I had also been busy this whole time expanding the mine here at my facility and increasing quantities of shale, sandstone, and limestone, which also allowed me to find a few pockets of coal. Now, I honestly didn't think that this coal burning steam engine was going to create that much pollution, but I was dead wrong about that, and for a couple of reasons. One of the things I'd already done to get this steam engine working was to create a little pumping house that would pump the water out of the nearby river through some pipes to my steam engine for it to work. These pipes ran through an underground tunnel I'd created, so I thought it would be a simple solution to move my steam engine farther away from the advanced masonry table, and might even make the whole situation a little better with my steam engine right underneath the pumping house. Prior to 9.0, to use electricity at a farther distance than just the proximity of the generator itself, you had to use some sort of electric lights or electric devices that would create a chain between your source and where you wanted your electricity. In 9.0, they introduced a new thing specifically for doing that, 
it's these transmission poles. Just like power poles you might see in the real world. So this was easy. I moved my steam generator to a new area that I had hollowed out to make it a little bigger and plop down the power poles and voila, I was back in business. Actually, I wasn't. The contamination from the air pollution translating into ground pollution was so bad that even moving my steam engine a good distance away from the farms was still creating a bit of a problem. The ashlar stone takes a long time to produce on the table, so that meant that this steam engine was going to have to run for long periods of time, and the cumulative pollution was absolutely deadly. So, this time, I scoped out an area where I could vent my smog that would be far enough away from any of the main farms that it wouldn't cause a problem, and proceeded to dig out a tunnel even farther that would lead to this new area. Now, I didn't have to do this. I could have just stuck the steam engine on the surface and used a couple of the transmission poles and been done with it. But doing things the easiest way isn't necessarily the fun way in eco. A lot of the creativity and fun is in the projects that you do. So with this tunnel and a new hollowed out area for my steam engine underground, all connected with pipes, there was just one more excessive thing I needed to do. And that was to create a tiny building that would do nothing more than serve as a little smokestack for my smog. I went way over the top with this little thing I made out of tier three concrete and tier four ashlar stone but the result was amazing. I mean, how cool does this little building look? Some of the things on the agenda for my next video is to talk about ways to diversify your production across the widest range of skills to stimulate the economy. Some government funded programs, the construction of a waste disposal site, and who knows what else. Like and subscribe if you want to see how much more mayhem and controversy I can create on the server, the continuation of this playthrough, and I'll be talking to you later.